Hey guys, so I just got back from a long weekend with a bachelor party, so I haven't even had a chance to look at these charts yet, really. I've just, I've only ever seen them on uh, on my phone, so we're gonna, we're gonna check this out together here. Um, let's see here, so right about, yeah, right about here, we went down here. So we had about a hundred was it a 50% move here? Okay, let's go ahead and start drawing some lines. Okay, first line I see here, we're gonna move from here down. So the first call I made um, was for this head and arms, or I'm sorry, head and shoulders formation here. And that's gonna be characterized with uh, shoulder here, shoulder here, and your head here, right? Obviously that did not hit. Another call I made was, I thought this was a bear flag here, right? With the, with the lines of the flag here, and this being the pole, this being the pole. But that also did not hit. So why didn't that hit? Well, let's get into that. But before we get into that, first thing I wanna cover is, um, I got a few messages uh, a few messages from you guys, um, uh, a little upset with my market prediction because some of you lost money on it. And um, the first thing I wanna say is, that sucks that you guys lost money. Um, I also lost money. I was very positive of this short opportunity. Um, a lot of the technical indicators pointed to that on multiple time frames. Um, the the patterning was there for a nice move down to our support here at around 85 to 90, depending on what exchange you're looking at. And um, it just didn't hit. Okay, the reason why I was calling for 90 is because this bear flag here, which is exactly what this looked like. Right, if you if you start at 207, if you guys remember from the last stream, just like a uh, just like a bull flag, bear flag can be working uh, the same way, right? You have 207, um, moving down to uh, 109, which gives us a pull length of 100. Let's pull this into um, let's give us a little bit here so we can get. Let's pull this into paint, like a professional. Uh, print screen. Let's go to paint. Close that. Don't save. Uh, don't save. Okay. Let's pull this into paint here. First thing that pops out to me, if we were only looking um, from you know this part on, so let's just pretend like this doesn't exist here. Let's cover this up here. This doesn't exist. Or let's go here. This doesn't exist. This to me is a classic bull, uh, bear flag. Okay, the reason why this this pops out as a classic bear flag is because you have a a very strong market move downward here. It terminates with a new low and it starts to rise in price. But with the rise in price, brings a decrease in volume. Okay, so we've got our decrease in volume here. Let's make this red because that sounds like it's going to be bad. So we've got a decrease in volume here. Okay, we've got a strong move downward here, moving down from here to here with a flat with a pole length, um, with a pole length here of 207 minus what did we say? 105 is that what it was? So let's just say pole length of 100 dollars. Or no, that's not right. Let me see this real quick. Let me go back to the chart. It's from here to here. Yeah. So pull length. Let's get to that. Pull length from here to here. Boom. Uh, pull length equals right about the level we're sitting at right now. So 189 uh, minus, what is this value here? Minus 110, let's just call it 115. Uh, minus 115, which equals, what is that, 74, $74 here. Hold on, I'm gonna let my dog out of my room real quick before she starts, starts being a little baby, one second. Sorry. So we got a pull length here of $74, which if this breaks out, OK, 
Okay, this would be a price target. You want to see my dogs in bed? Price target of uh, let's say it breaks out around um, 150, 160 ish. That would be a price target of 160, uh, 160 minus seven. It's called 75, which would put us right at about 85. Right. Well, when we zoom out. Make this bold here. Oh, oh, it was bold. Shit. Let's put a little square on it. Square. Okay, this is this was our previous price target. Okay. Well, that is perfectly in line with this historic uh, midterm support level at around 85 to 90. So, this is what I was anticipating happening. This is why I was so adamant about this breakout was this is going to break out and slam right into the support level. But I committed the cardinal sin of trying to short crypto, and that is not what you do. It just seemed too perfect not to, and I made the mistake. So let's look at why this didn't break out. Let's look at why this didn't break out here. Okay, let's get rid of this. Um, actually, let's go back to the chart here. Actually, before we go into why this didn't break out, I just want to address a couple of things. Um, a few of you guys messaged me because you were trading on the information that I provided, um, and you were upset that uh, that um, you know I made a call and you traded on it and you lost money on it. First of all, I want to say I'm sorry that you lost money, but at the same time, I really want to emphasize that if you're trading, especially on leverage, um, do not use me as your sole, um, you know, go-to resource. Because even when the conditions are perfect, right? Even when you're looking at the six-hour MACD and it says, "Boom, we're about to, we're about to go into a, a long bear market," or you look at the twelve-hour and it says, "Man, uh, we're in for some dark times ahead." <laughs> you know, you can have a day like today where it rallies 50 freaking dollars out of nowhere, right? So don't ever just take some, you know, especially me, don't, don't, don't just take uh, the trading um, trends that I'm posting and use that as your go-to resource, right? That's, that's not, um, that's not advisable because when I'm posting things online, um, you know, I'm only posting about a quarter to maybe like uh, you know an eighth of, of the actual analysis that I'm doing on my own and whenever I see something that I think is worth noting or worth worth your attention that's when I'll post it but you know that's that's not that's that's not smart trading to just have one person as your single point of failure because <laughs> what about what what about an events like like what just happened right we were in a strong bear market um, we had all the signs of a, of a bearish continuation of a with a significant drop and we broke out out of nowhere right that I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that some of you guys lost money but you know I can't stress that enough what I'm what I'm you know what I'm what I'm presenting in the stream and with my charts it is not to be construed as trading advice it is just a reference I'm not advocating entries or exits or anything of the sort. That's why I don't post my entries or exits. The most I will ever do from time to time is, uh, is say, yeah, I'm short. And that's about it. I specifically don't post my entries and exits for that reason because I don't want people copying and I don't want to feel responsible for other people losing, uh, losing money. So, all right, now that we got that out of the way, um, let's, let's look back at this, at this bear flag here. Um, that this bear flag that didn't hit, right? I was crying. I was saying, you know, oh, this is a uh, this is this is a bull trap. This is a bull trap, right? We had our we had our bear flag here, and then it just it just broke out. So let's look at let's look at together uh, why this didn't break out because I actually haven't looked at it yet either. I just I got home 30 minutes ago and I've, I've been gone. I've been out of town all weekend. So let's let's figure this out together here. Okay, so we have our peak here. Um, let's connect some, some guys connect some lines here. Um, here's our bear flag. Um, 
Let's connect this here. Boom. Uh, let's go here. Let's make this a little nicer here. Um, okay, we have we've got a trend line going here. This is this is worth noting because this is right where the breakout of our of our bear flag was. Um, okay. This is where a breakout of our bear flag was and it was along this trend line here. Um, we've got a check of the trend line here. We've got a test of new relative highs here, a test of the trend line. It was rejected and it started moving up, but it did move up on very high volume here. Okay. It did move up on very high volume here. We've got a support line here. That's good. And it's something that was a point of interest in the past, so it gives it more uh, strength on the support. Um, we've got a high here. Let's mark that down. We've got a high here. Okay. This was also uh, a point of interest um, because if you guys recall uh, from the stream last time, um, looking at the macro view here, uh, this was right about the time that um, that our bull run lost its initial steam, right? Because we, we made a, a new high here, corresponded with a MACD high here, made a new high here, a new MACD high here, made a new high here, but we lost some momentum here. So we were in for a reversal, okay? And that just happened to correspond with this support line here which turned into a resistance line in the future. So let's get it back into our smaller time scale. Okay, so again, the new high here, made a new high, but did, but failed to make uh, a new high on the MACD right here. Okay, so this was an important point um, in our trend. So significant, significant support here, turned into significant resistance here. And so a breakout of this is gonna indicate um, this is going to indicate um, the bearish breakout. I'm sorry, the, the bullish breakout from the bear trend, to be specific. Okay. So as we're moving along, we broke out of the out of the uh, the bear flag here. We moved along, and we started to pick up steam with not much volume here. Let's make this a little smaller here. Not much volume here. In fact, the volume continued to decrease, um, which is why up until about I don't know, sometime this morning, I wasn't convinced that that we weren't uh, going to break out of the bear trend yet because the volume hadn't picked up, and the volume is the number one indicator of trend reversal and um, trend continuation. So I was waiting for that waiting for that volume to, to to pick up, and look at that, it picked up right where the um, right where that support line was for the previous highs and the resistance was for our local high here and it broke out and it broke out with a very high volume here very high relative volume to the trend okay so let's um let's pull this into paint here so we can just get a nice little uh, get things nice and organized here um, yeah, one hour is probably good Let's go to paint. New. No. Okay. Let's clean this up. So get rid of this guy. Um, get rid of that. And get rid of this. Okay. Okay. So we have our. Let's, let's go ahead and leave this bear flag on here just because it's. Oops. Just because it's. Um, Point of interest and in our overall picture of things. So bear flag here, okay. Got our bear flag, other line here. MS Paint Master Skills, <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't. I don't like charting on the actual charts. I just I like drawing them out on hand so I can have little timestamps of different ideas. It's like. I, I treat paint like like a lot of people treat uh, sticky notes. I just have a, a shitload of uh, of paint um, paint files where I just uh, give different ramblings on here. Okay, so we've got we've got um, 
let's make our supports and resistance lines blue. Um, so let's make this actually up here. We've got, get rid of this. We've got, let's make a little note. Let's make notes green. Um, this is where our first breakout was. Okay. First breakout to all time high. Um, that failed to peak on the six hour MACD. Um, what else? Decreasing volume. Let's make this. Oh, first, let's add our. Jumping around here. This is our bear flag pole. Okay. And yes, okay. So up until this point right here, let's make this purple. Up until this point right here, um, it was not safe to say that we were. In my opinion, it was not safe to say that we were um, that we were reversing the bear trend. In my opinion, because I always look for volume to confirm the uh, the trend reversal or trend continuation. Okay, we saw a decreasing volume here, uh, consistently decreasing volume. And this is actually right about the time that I sent out that tweet uh, this morning saying that the uh, the bear trend broke and um, that we're moving up. We moved up about, I don't know, $20 or something like that. So let's minimize this real quick. Let's put a, let's just see what the Fibonacci retraces look like. Okay, let's start here. Actually, let's start here. So, so 61 percent was a point of interest to be expected 50 percent was a point of interest actually I don't like how low this is we can move this up a little bit you can it's okay to trim wick sometimes let's move it here so 61 percent point of interest makes sense um, 50 point uh, 50 percent 38 percent these are all to be expected 23 percent was about what, when we started breaking out Okay, and if we do an extension of this, if we do an extension of this Fibonacci, uh, I'm sorry, if we do a Fibonacci extension, then we can expect, uh, what is this move? Let's do uh, 197, okay. This is 197, let's call this the bottom. This is, what is that, 114, 114. So total length of this guy is going to be, total length of this is going to be 197 minus 114, which equals 85, 85, right? Let's pull our calculator. 197 minus 114. Oh, Jesus Christ, 83. That's what I get for drinking all weekend. Okay. All right, 83. So this total move is 83. Um, a 120% extension um, of this equals 80, 83 times 1.27. This is 105, 105.5. Um, so, so this is going to be, wait, am I doing math right? No, Jesus. I'm sorry, guys. <sighs> what am I doing? 83 times 27. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. 127% is 105.5. So 114 plus 105.5. Oops. equals 219 so this means that our next price target if this if this breaks this 197 our next price target is gonna be $220
Okay. This is just spitballing off of just looking at a Fibonacci uh, extension. Let's look at the other indicators to confirm this sort of prediction here. Did I really write that down wrong? What did I write down? People are saying, dude, I'm bad with numbers. Hey, you get off my ass, guy. I just got back from drinking for like four days straight at a bachelor party, so I'm like, my brain is fried. Jesus. What did I do wrong? 114. Wait, no. 1.27 times 105.5, 130. Did I really mess this up? What is going on right now? Let me start over. Jesus Christ. 83 times 1.27 equals 105.5. 105.5 plus 114 is. What did I do wrong? No, no. Get out of here. Get out of here, you, you troll. All right, 220. This is the new price target here. Just based on Fibonacci uh, extensions alone. Okay, so let's let's look at the indicators to confirm that this might be the trend. Um, let's the one I like to do for the longer time scales is gonna be six hours. Um, so that's nice. We have um, the MACD on the six hour flipped. Uh, we're still pretty bullish. We haven't lost much momentum. Okay, what about the twelve hour? Twelve hour is about to flip. That's nice. That's promising. Um, what does the one day look like? One day, a little bit of divergence here, but um, we're still on the same candle, so you know it's too early to call that. Let's look at the one hour. One hour looks like what? Um, no divergence here. Okay, we've got a high corresponding with a high, high corresponding with a high. Okay, RSI, no divergence here. Um, okay, yeah. So I think we're still in the mood. We're still uh, in, the, in, in the business of moving up here. I think we're just kind of um, chilling at this 197. This 197 corresponds with a couple of highs here. Um, this is where we broke out. Um, and we just tagged our all-time high, so that makes sense. The market's a little scared of that because it doesn't have much historical significance in the market. So that makes sense. Yeah. So I would say based off of the several indicators we just looked at, um, the price target given the current state of the market is going to be around 220 bucks. Okay, let's take some questions here. Sorry, I was, uh, let me scroll up here, see if we have any questions here. Okay, does anyone have any questions about how I arrived at this $220 price target here? Okay, you have so many questions. Start asking questions. Let's uh, let's get some answers here. Why did I choose 127? 127 is is a typical Fibonacci extension. Um, it shows up a lot uh, in the, in the market. So he, here's an example of the 127 percent extension here. Um, that's what got us to. Uh, that's what got us to this price value. So if we looked at the six hour chart in the past, um, and this is the beginning of our bull run here. Uh, and we can see that we ended. I'm 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 saying this is the end of the of of our bull run, even though this is really the end of the bull run. But this is where we lost all our momentum. So if we go here to here, um, we get 175 um, minus 87, uh, 175 minus 87. That equals 88 times 1.27 equals 111.76. So we add that to our original number, and we get um, we got about 207. Uh, looking, I'm still trying to understand fat candle versus skinny candle. Okay, do you mean wicks and, and candle bodies? Is that what you're asking? Uh, looking real time right now at some downward pressure from 197, and now back low 190s after testing. Do you think we end up seeing a nice downward hit? to $170 before refueling the rocket to 220 and beyond. Um, let's look back here. Do I think... Oh, wait. What, what are we doing here? What was the question? Let's see it again. Looking real time right now, it's some downward pressure from 197 and now back low 190s. Okay, 190s right here. Uh, do, you, do you think we end up seeing a nice downward hit of 170s? Um, I'm inclined to say no, but... Unless you mean like this, maybe testing this again. I think it's totally possible to, to test uh, this peak right here. That, that wouldn't surprise me if we tested this uh, 180 line. Yeah, we have a nice support line here. Um, we've got another support line here. That's been a 
point of interest even in our current trend so yeah I think it's totally feasible that we could test this line what is this 185 yeah that makes sense I mean we basically tested uh, tested it already you know a little bit here but I wouldn't be surprised if we tested it again is there a price projected date for the 220 no there's not a price projected date these um, market trends um, aren't really meant to be uh, aren't really meant to be um, paired with time projections uh, because so many other indicators will uh, indicate the trend before the time will if that makes any sense you can just reverse the fib direction can I does it give me an extension if I do that oh shit <laughs> oh man I never even noticed that I didn't even notice this had a fib extension on it okay learn something new every day cool I thought I was been looking for that fib extension cool well, that makes it easier well you don't have to you guys won't have to suffer through my um, my calculator skills over here anymore okay more questions here how strong is the how strong of an indicator is volume seems like you use it a lot uh, volume is the strongest indicator because volume tells you how many people not how many people but how many coins are being traded at whatever value on whatever market at a given time so that is the best indicator of the market is the volume um, you should be very suspicious of strong price movements without volume correlating uh, those strong price movements because that means that there's not a lot of confidence in those prices so that's something that um, that you should be really wary of and that's why I always look for volume confirmation before uh, changing my view on the trend personally that's my strategy GDAC bounced off that 30 minutes ago if we test the 185 line again and it breaks below what would our next result so um, if it broke below 185 which is this guy it would hit you know it'd be around this area the low 180s like 179 181 ish that'd be the next uh, line of support um, do I take into account Bitcoin trends? Yes, I do take into account Bitcoin trends because I also trade the ratio. Um, we can look at some Bitcoin trends too. Or what am I doing? Kraken, Coinbase. Okay. Man, I'll tell you what though. Uh, trading Bitcoin has been so hard lately because there's so many new people coming to the market um, that it's like, it's impossible to call a top and it's impossible to call a bottom. Like you can't nail Bitcoin down right now because I think there's too much hype around it. Um, you know, I, I, I said this before, but I think Bitcoin is like the Folgers of, of the crypto space because it, um, anytime like Ethereum gets good news, uh, Ripple gets good news, um, you know, Dash gets good news, Litecoin gets good news, Bitcoin rises because people think Bitcoin is cryptocurrency, not that it is a cryptocurrency. So when people hear that all these other things are doing well, I think they're buying the Bitcoin because that's all they know. You know, they don't understand the avenues to receive these other coins. And so they're just buying up the Bitcoin. Um, that's the only way I can make sense out of it because Bitcoin, it's rise lately. It's just not made any sense. And I called the top at like 1300. I saw a lot of people call it top at 1300, 1500. And I just gave up. I was like, you know what? Let's just let, let Bitcoin do its thing. Let it run out of steam. Um, can I give my opinion on the correlation of Ethereum and Bitcoin since the, since the top of the bull run? Uh, can you be more specific with that question? So based on volume, when Ethereum starts trading in China, there's a strong chance price will be driven up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what happened, right? Uh, Huobi coin, or uh, Huobi is a Chinese exchange, right? Um, they just added Ethereum to the market, and that could have been what caused us to break out positively out of this, uh, out of the out of the uh, the bear flag that we saw I think that's probably what did the trick you know we were heading down for some for some dark times and um, we just got a new flood of volume people saw it as cheap coins because you know we were trading at 217 they got added and they're like oh cool discounted coins so they just started buying them up follow-up question why did ethereum recover better than Bitcoin I think because of probably adding so much volume to the market you know it just pulled everyone else up don't you think there will be a huge difference on arbitrage between USD and Chinese yuan. Um, I don't know. I don't know how easy it is to arbitrage between different 
uh, different countries and having different exchanges because I think in order to really do it well, you have to know someone in each country because of the different regu- uh, the different restrictions on the regulations. So I don't know how feasible it actually is to uh, to um, to arbitrage between those um, unless you know you're good at uh, faking your identity and things like that. But I'm not advocating that, of course. Mr. Farmer Joe is projecting F to be in 300s by next week. As new people finally get uh, blah, blah, blah. thoughts on the 300 price. Yeah, okay. So I've seen this $300 uh, projection thrown around, and I think it's totally feasible. Uh, let's look back on the market here. So let's go back to the 6-hour candles. Uh, or let's go 12 hours, actually. Because there's this ascending channel that we fit really nicely in. And I think that's where that's coming from. So we've got this to here. Drag this down. Let's go, let's call it this. And we're within this lower bound here. Let's go here. It's more like that. Oh, also just to backtrack. Well, we won't go to that. But okay. So yeah, um, if you look here, um, sometime next week would be about here on the on the scale, on the time scale here. Um, this would be about 300 here. Right? Yeah, I think I think we'd have to do some serious, serious pickup and volume to get there. But I think um, you know, three hundred is definitely possible. Um, I don't know about next week. That seems a bit optimistic, but um, I would have to look more into into his analysis of it. I'm not too familiar with it personally, especially considering we're diverging here. We're starting to to diverge here, right? We're diverging here. So. Um, not only that, and we're de- decreasing volume. Unless we get a massive rally, I I don't know, I don't know that if, if I see us hitting. Uh, what do you say, three hundred plus? Yeah, I don't know. That seems a bit optimistic, if you ask me. Uh, what is this other question here? Oh, they haven't added it yet. Okay, Huobi hasn't. S- oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, all this news came out while I was gone, so I haven't actually gotten a chance to read into it. Um, I just, I thought they added it like that night when I when I read the, the the Twitter article. They're adding the 31st, huh? Like May 31st? Yeah, May 31st. Oh, well that changes things. If they're adding it May 31st, which is in like two days, right? Two days, right? Uh, 31 minus 29. Yeah, two two days. Um, that was a joke, guys. I know how to subtract that. But yeah, if if they're doing it in two days, that might give us the pump up because that's gonna be a lot of additional volume added to the market. That could get that could make things really interesting, huh? Yeah, I take back my statement. I take back my statement about it being overly optimistic. It's definitely possible. I mean, I don't see any technical indicators that that um, that point to that, other than this upper bound of the tr- of the channel here. I mean, this would basically have to go vertical again. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see here. Another question. Um, let's see. I love the range of trading Ethereum experience in this channel. You're helping everyone immensely. Thanks. Uh, I hope so. That's the goal, you know. I'm learning stuff too, so it's uh, it's mutual. Seven hundred, yeah, whatever. Okay, not sure if this is too novice or too broad a question, but can you explain how to put together the candlesticks, volume, MACD, and RSI indicator information together? Basically, I mean, how do you start to put the puzzle together given these pieces of info? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, actually a really good question. So, the first thing I always do when I start looking at charts is um and i'll just do this quickly but the first thing i always do is i like to find points of interest in the market right the market took a turn here market took a turn uh here here it found support here right found a little bit of support here which it also found support in the past so you want to find these points of interest okay that's where you want to start first you want to start um you want to start with uh the point of the points of interest with your, your support and your resistance lines, um, especially the ones that did big market turns. Like this was a big market turn because it set us into our, our little bear trend. This was a big market turn. So this is going to be of great significance in the past because now we've got an established um, really strong support here. I mean, we took a almost a $100 dump here and we rebounded off of that like almost 100%. So this is this is great support in the past uh, for the future. This can be uh, a really significant of uh, Jesus of really great significance in the future. Okay. Next thing you want to look at is the volume correlation because that's going to tell you, um, you know, correlating the volume with the price movement. Um, as the price goes up, as volume if volume's going down, um, that seems to that usually indicates that um, it's running out of steam because. 
the vo the market is losing interest in that. Um, and then you want to look at your MACD, uh, which is going to go into um, that's your momentum indicators and your RSI or your momentum indicators. So I'm not going to go into detail at this moment um, because that's a that's like a multi hour long conversation of how to read them, um, how to trade them, um, trend reversals and things like that. So I would really recommend uh, you know just going on YouTube and literally typing in. Uh, MACD um, uh, trade strategies like that's a good start or RSI trade straight trade strategies like th those are great starts um, and from there just you know just build up your knowledge base from there explain oh explain divergence yeah yeah so um, divergence is going to be um, let's pull out paint here because we're pros oh that's that's Google uh, paint um, so divergence literally means you know you've got something going here and you've got something going here um, and the trend is doing this which means it's diverging right it's getting farther away from each other the trend is higher highs lower lows etc okay convergence would be this which means you've got uh, lower highs higher lows and they're gonna converge at a singular point here um, so when we apply that to the chart um, you can look at things like the MACD which is a great indicator of convergence and divergence this measures um, this measures momentum so if you've got something that's um, here's a great example here on the six-hour chart <clears throat> so you had the trend going like this right the trend was moving moving up in value right oops uh, the MACD was going up in value until it made this new high and then it started to make a new low so as you can see oops let's get rid of that and get rid of that okay so as you can see here this continued to increase and the MACD went down so they were diverging which means it's typically an indication of a trend reversal because it's losing momentum so anytime you see MACD divergence that means trend reversal is usually upcoming and right now Coinbase is making a, another try at the top so let's let's look at this real quick this is this is pretty nice Okay, let me look through these questions some more. Have a tax attorney go over that. What? Obi doesn't happen until the 31st. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, non, noon Singapore, okay. You fucked it up, let's see. China volume plus fresh meat money volume equals profit. Yes, uh, that's exactly, okay. I'm starting to, okay. Should I start buying small amounts or should I wait till I know what I'm doing? Um, I honestly, I'm not gonna answer that question. I'll just tell you what I did. Um, if you believe in the tech, I see no reason in just buying, um, buying the currency of whatever you're looking at, whether it's Bitcoin, Ripple, or whatever. Um, if you believe in the tech and you believe it's going to go up over time, buy it. You know, like don't worry about these little tiny fluctuations. Just accumulate, and as you, you know, as you um, start to understand the, the trade strategy, you know, like trade a little bit of your of your holdings you know don't ever don't ever trade your full stack I see so many people telling me that they're trading their full stack and man that is a good way to screw yourself let's see here okay of course yeah, coins. man there's a lot of people here 150 people in the stream today a lot of activity here what else gotta go thanks for doing this oh thank you Nico 9111 glad you had a good time ratio is taken off yeah this is uh this is this is getting ridiculous. Big gains are being made in the, in the Ethereum space. Not a lot of volume here, though. You know, it's um, this is what has me a little sketchy. So I always let's see, let's draw some lines. Okay, we got a trend here. Oops, we got a trend here. Drop the line, man. Okay, got a trend. Boom. What other kind of trend? What other lines we see here? We see a low, a low. It's a little bit of an ascending channel here. Um, decreasing volume. Yeah, this will be. This is going to get interesting when. Let's make this a little more accurate. Let's do. Let's do two hours. This is gonna get interesting, um, which is probably gonna happen during the stream at this rate. This thing is, God, what a monster. These are like, these are some serious, this is serious profit here, between here and here. It's gonna get interesting when this starts tagging the 8.75, and 0 0.0875 is like a mental milestone, so this is gonna be a point of interest here. Let's set an alarm here. Or wait, no, 0 0.875 date. So that way, if we tag this while we're in the stream, we can take a look at it and see what else. Can you explain the correction that happened at the end of last week? What factors drove it? Is it auto correction if the price is driven up too high? I am a bit confused about this. Also, thank you very much for the informative session. Yeah, so basically, um, we climbed too fast and the market corrected, which was to be expected. Um, I didn't like these, uh, these values above 200. Um, it wasn't comfortable here. It wasn't comfortable here either. Uh, you know, you can see that it just, it really just didn't like it. There's a lot of sell volume, a lot of sell pressure, a lot of FOMO and go here, but 
before people just capitulated and you know we saw some some serious downfall here but uh yeah it was just we climbed too fast we climbed from 87 to 217 i mean we saw a 100 percent price increase in a matter of how many days 17th to yeah in a matter of a week we just climbed way too fast we overextended ourselves and uh large gains don't come cheaply right how much of a reach uh, let me see how much of a retrace this was so yeah 78 percent retrace that's like major pullback um you know we found some security here at 61.50 let's see another question any idea what all the coins seem to be attached to the hip yeah they're all attached to the hip because bitcoin is the main driving force between them and uh holy shit let's go ahead and look at this we're about to test 875. No way. I'm, let's see, what does the six hour look like? It's flipped. 12 hour is just recently flipped. Man, we might crush this. Uh, we're diverging on the one day. We're diverging on the one hour as well. We may see some a little bit of pullback here, but this is gonna get interesting here very shortly. Get rid of that. Wow, it jumped so much. Look at that, God. The ratio is on a freaking tear right now. It's just climbing, which does not bode well for Bitcoin if the ratio keeps climbing like that. Because we're not seeing much price increase here on the on the Ether market. Okay, why is 0.087 a milestone? Not 0 0.087, 0.0875. The market seems to stall out on things like whole numbers and quarters and halves of things. So it just seems like a mental milestone that uh, people might set stops at uh they might uh you know sell their positions there do major numbers like 200 have an effect on your technical now yes so major numbers do have an effect especially if i'm looking to like um scalp a position so if, if if i've got a long um and i've got a projection that puts me above something like above 200 i would i would uh sell a part of my position at uh 200 because so, i'm anticipating a pullback because people just you got to think the market is full of people um like you and i that have um emotions and so when someone's like okay i'm gonna put a sell order at 200 200 seems like a good number to take some profit so you gotta expect some pullback on these major numbers and uh, you know adjust your analysis accordingly let's see here welcome to 245 country what's up with the million euro buy wall let's take a look million euro buy wall oh man we popped above it we're seeing some resistance here million euro buy wall let's look at a kraken uh, euro oh Jesus uh, yeah that's someone trying to protect their position <laughs> that's all that is someone's putting up a huge uh, sell wall um, and uh, that's a lot that's a lot can I not zoom out of this okay well crypto watch you're a piece of shit uh, yeah no that's just someone trying to spook people out of trying to get there he probably has 175 down because I honestly don't ever look at the euro market much 175 was the last line this was the last line of major um, resistance before we peaked at the all-time high on the F euro market so they probably have their stop out there on a large position that would be my guess. There's no way of knowing. But yeah, it's definitely order book manipulation to try to spook people out of positions. Um, they're trying to cover their ass. They probably shorted the bear flag like I did. And they're deep on their position. And, you know, take it with a grain of salt. That's not going to get eaten up. That's going to get pulled. Big movement. Having tested 200 again. We tested 200 again? What market did we test 200 again? We're doing it right now, though. We're making our way up here. Yeah, 197. Say how much when you hover over the depth chart. Um, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> no, it doesn't? Because it's not pulling up here. I've never, I didn't know you could extract actual volume from the depth chart in the top left. Oh, look at that. I never even noticed that. Jesus, some fucking trader I am. Wow, okay. Do you expect a dip if we should climb over 200? Um, I wouldn't think so. If we climb over 200, um, if we climb over 200, that's pretty significant. Um, I would expect more volume to come in than less, especially in the order book. Check this out. It really flattens out after 200 on the sell side, but don't don't ever trade on the, on the order book um the order book is not a representation of the overall market it just tells you uh, a snapshot of the market at a specific point in time it doesn't give you any projections of where it's going to go or what will happen when the price actually does reach that value it just tells you a snapshot of this is what people are trading right now and that's all you can take from that what do you think is the realistic ceiling of bitcoin oh man i can't make a prediction of that what do i think is the realistic ceiling in five years man there's no way to know that i don't even know what it's going to be in five minutes I can't tell you that, but that is interesting that we saw some pullback here. Basically tagged 0.0875 and pulled back. Can I take a look at Litecoin? Yeah, I'll look at Litecoin, but uh, man, I don't, I don't, I personally don't trade Litecoin because it just seems so manipulated. Um, what market do you want 
GDAX. What am I looking at? Litecoin on GDAX. Let's get that. All right, so let's do some hocus pocus here and draw some lines. Read some tea leaves. Is everyone in the Reddit threads like to say? Um, okay, we got a resistance line here. Resistance line here. Support here. Support here. Uh, why don't I trade Litecoin? Because of shit like this. <laughs> And shit like this. You know why the volume, you know why the price picked up like that? Because uh, what's his face, the guy who created Litecoin, uh, <laughs> tweeted a price prediction, and he tweets, and then the price skyrockets. Like it's, it's gross. I don't agree with it, and I don't want to support it. That's why. All right, this is a better support line here. So this was a resistance line before, made a support. Uh, we're treading along that. Okay, let's see. This is six hours. Here's a significant point. Okay, one, two, okay. Six hour MACD flipped, okay. Volume's looking a little low, but not too bad. It had, high, it had high volume as people were selling from some event, I'm imagining. Uh, this is a resistance line, historic resistance line here. A little bit of, yeah, this was this was support before, turned resistance. So I would guess, come on dude, read that Fibonacci retracement. Um, considering the six hour MACD just flipped, um, you got decent support trying or a decent volume trying to test this line here this uh this value here um once this once this breaks i would guess a price target of 27 25 ish so you know what is this 25 two dollar rise that's not bad four percent increase um possibly a rise to 28 given it and see it you know you'd have to see wait and see how strong this is this is cruising along 47 um on the rsi so i'd say there's a good chance of hitting a 28 what's the 12 hour look like okay starting to come to a close here not quite there but it's on its way what does one day look like mm. so here's something that would make me a little uh hesitant uh in the long term with litecoin because it is not diverging here Every time it makes a new low, it's making a new low on the MACD here. Wait, is it? Or is that an, an illusion? Let's see. 1.23, 1.17, 1.14, 1.23, 1.14. Okay, so that's actually not, that's actually diverging a little bit. So you got a trend here where you're making a new low. You got a trend here where you're making, yeah, okay, that's feasible. Six hour, let's go here. Um, yeah, I think I think it's totally realistic just to you know set a price target around 27, 28. 28 is gonna give you some trouble just because 28. Where's 28? 28 right here because it's been a point of interest in the past. Um, let's draw another line here. Let's get a little dirty here. Okay, so point of interest here. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my two cents on Litecoin. I don't trade it, so take that with a grain of salt. Can you analyze the waves charts? I feel like it's been progressively gaining very slowly, but hasn't gotten much volume yet. Just what is the uh, the sign for waves? I'll, I'll take a look at it, sure. I know you discussed how the bear flag broke down, but do you think you can discuss FUSD at its present state? Where the hell have you been for the past hour? <laughs> That's what we've been talking about. Let's see. Looks like the bubble is about to pop with the double top. What double top? Do you mean FUSD? Do you mean Litecoin? Uh, you gotta be more specific. All right. Let's see. Do you guys have anything else you guys wanna um, go over? Any questions about the market in general? Um, and uh, I'll post this chart too. Let's clean this up a little bit. Oh, whoops. What What do I trade? Um, I trade Bitcoin and Ether, and then on the ratio. That's about it. Um, I'm not really sold on a whole lot of, of, of the other cryptocurrencies out there. Um, and also, Ether is, for the most part, pretty easy to predict. Um, I've just found in general that crypto is really, really hard to predict during the bear trends. It's just like consistently difficult to call. But the bull trends in crypto seem to be pretty consistent, at least with Ether. If you're going to put money on ETH Bitcoin, would you wait until it breaks the channel upward? Put in money now. Uh, well, I'm gonna say this, uh, that I'm not gonna give trading advice. I'll just say what one might wanna do if one were to look to enter the market. So, it's seen some resistance here. If this breaks, if this breaks the channel, man, this could really send it soaring. And uh, there's no telling where this thing's gonna go. If this breaks upward, if this breaks upward, I mean, Shit, who knows, 0 .0, 0 0.1? Man, all right, let's do a little thought experiment real quick. If, let's pull out, um, let's see here, fresh paint, okay. If, 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 let's see, goes 
point oh one. Or is it point oh one or point one? Point one. It was a point one. Then uh, let's assume let's assume Bitcoin doesn't really rise too much. Um, to, for those who don't know, this is uh, velocity like that. Then that's going to equal 0.1 times 2300. 230. Oh, what? That'd be a big move. And that's right around our Fibonacci extension as well. What was our Fibonacci extension? It's going to be 220. I have to go to $230. $230. Yeah, if we break this ascending channel, this is going to cause some big moves in the Ether and uh, F Bitcoin market. Why is breaking out of the channel such an event? Because that signals to the market that uh, we're moving upward and it's typically um, it typically corresponds with a lot of um, indicators like the MACD, the volume, the RSI, uh, different things like um, if you want to look at your Bollinger Bands is another good indicator. Um, it's an indicator of a long-term trend that is finding new highs and it signals a lot of buy signals uh, in the market that will typically cause uh, a, a breakout. That's what happened to Bitcoin, and that's why it broke out so high. Yeah, we got the Bollinger Bands tightening here. When the bull, just a little fun fact here. But if you're looking at the Bollinger Bands as an indicator, um, when they start tightening, that typically indicates a large price movement, right? You can see it here. They expanded, they tightened, and then all of a sudden they busted out. So if we see this sort of activity here, um, I mean, look at this move. This is a move from 0.04. 0.05 to 0.08. I mean, that's totally feasible that we could see 0.01. If this breaks this, we could see 0.01. I'm sorry, 0.1. So this is going to be a point of interest. Keep an eye on this if you're looking to enter the market. And always, when you're looking for trend confirmation, wait for the candle to finish. Don't enter a trade before your candle is finished because that's a good way to wreck yourself. You get all sorts of fake outs that way. Not on what you should do with your money exactly. He's just looking at this chart and speculating. He's not going to tell you to buy. Dude, I 100% am never going to tell you, buy this, this is guaranteed, sell this, this is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. Um, and not only that, but, uh, you know, like I'm not a hedge fund manager, so I'm not going to manage your money for you. Can you do a FIB extension on the ratio? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. So let's say here, 0.09, it's not too bad. Actually, let's look at a higher time frame here. So let's look here. Oh, whoops. Let's go here on the macro trend here. Click. Jesus. God, Crypto Watch, you're a pile of shit. Man, first thing I'm doing this week is uh, getting a better trading interface because this is such garbage. 127% extension puts us to 0.095. Um, yeah, man, that's uh, totally feasible, right? This is when the Bollinger Band started to expand. They contract here. Um, yeah, 0.094 wouldn't be a bad price target if this breaks. That could be a good chunk of change. But this is not trading advice. Don't trade on what I'm telling you. I'm just telling you my general thoughts. Uh, will you be my hedge fund manager? How much are you going to pay me? <laughs> uh, can you run through how to use RSI? Sure. So let's find a good example here. So RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. And it's just a measure of momentum in the market. And it indicates whether the market is oversold or overbought right so overbought region is going to be your upper values here and your oversold is going to be here so if something is oversold then that means uh, the buyers are usually going to start stepping in and if it's overbought then that means the sellers are going to start stepping in um, and you can use it to in to see uh, divergence in the market like here's a good example here right this shows us that we've got good strength in the market here because we've got new highs corresponding with new highs in the RSI. So we've got a healthy upward growth here. Um, I think we've still got a lot in us on the ETH <clears throat> USD market. And I think the 
the, the 220 price target is totally realistic. Where will I be? <clears throat> Man, I gotta say, <sighs> going on a bachelor party in a casino for three days killed my lungs and throat. It's just full of cigarettes and full of uh, um, failure in the air, and it just dries out your throat. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to consider F Bitcoin trading. Uh, basically, it indicates how many F. Yeah. So the the ratio trading, you know, it's a little abstract because it's you're trading two speculative speculative uh, speculative currencies against themselves. Uh, but just think about it like this. Um, Right, so if you have the the F USD market, you're trading one currency for another, um, and then if you wanted to trade one cryptocurrency for another, you would trade the ratio. So if you wanted to trade Bitcoin for F, you'd go to the ratio and you say, okay, what's the rate for uh, trading Bitcoin for Ether, and then you trade based on this ratio. Same idea. Uh, what does that mean for the columns on the MACD? Oh, the column the the columns are just a visual representation of the distance between uh, the signal line and the uh, uh, moving average that's this distance here right where do i think a good entry point would be um a good entry point um i would look for an entry point around here because you've got really good support this is a good support line it's possible we'll test it again so you know anywhere in here anywhere in here it's good but that's not trading advice that's just in general so don't come crying to me if the if the market all of a sudden takes a downward turn and you decide to panic sell that's not that's not on me <laughs> How did I learn all this? Um, I made a couple of bad trades, um, like a, like six or seven months ago, and uh, I didn't. I became really obsessed with understanding why people kept consistently making money um, with the crypto space, and I was consistently being psyched out by market moves, and so I literally just went uh, as deep as I could um, with. Uh, any any piece of information, whether it's YouTube videos, chart uh, examples, live trading, anything and everything I could get my hands on, um, I became obsessed with it and um, spent many a nights, probably about a hundred hours at least, watching YouTube videos of people trading. And until I understood it, if I ever had a question, I was asking someone in, in the Reddit threads, um, or googling it, or looking at it on YouTube or something. Um, yeah, you just gotta get obsessed with it. You gotta be obsessed. And you know, you can't harp on... My mic is too quiet. Is that better? You can't harp on why you make bad trades. You need to... Un I'm sorry, let me, let me correct that. You can't harp on making bad trades. It's okay to make bad trades. What's not okay is to not take the time to understand why you made the bad trade, okay? You don't have to be right 100% of the time to make money. You don't even have to be right the majority of the time. You just have to trade with high confidence and be willing to, to uh, drop your ego and cut your losses when you're trading a losing position. I did that today. Uh, I closed a short that I had open and I lost a significant amount of money. But you keep going. I opened a long and now I'm up. So is my is my volume okay? Is anyone, does everyone hear me okay? Or is it just this guy? How to control emotion when you're trading? You have to be a sociopath. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you just have to be. You have to be logical about it, and that's about it. You know, don't 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 take it personally when you make a bad trade, because even when you do everything right, uh, sometimes it, that doesn't matter. Sometimes it's not. It's not about doing. Uh, you know, it's not about your pride, and it's not about your ego of, of saying, you know, the market says this. I'm going to stick with this. I made this prediction. I'm sticking with this. It's you know, you gotta you gotta be adaptive. You gotta be willing to admit you're wrong. Let's see, where do I margin trade? I margin trade on Kraken. The basics of margin trading. Oh, that's a that's another conversation for another night. Basically, okay. Well, we'll we'll do a, a ten thousand foot overview. Uh, basically, just like if you go to the bank to take out a, a mortgage for a house, you're basically just increasing your buying power. Um, you're using leverage. You're putting yourself in debt to increase your buying power, hoping that uh, you'll gain, um, you know, you'll make money on your position based on your equity. That's about it. You're taking out a, you're taking out a loan. Thoughts on holding? So um, I don't actually trade um, GNT. Um, GNT is Golem, right? That's the one that, 
uses unused computing power to uh, I'm not I don't quite understand the tech behind it but it sounds like a, a cool thing and I think it's just totally something worth looking into sentiment on the state of crypto so up until about four or five days ago I was very bearish about crypto I thought that um, that we were about to have a massive correction and even though we did see a pretty significant correction like I was thinking I was thinking we we're about to go into the ice ages but uh, considering we just consolidated and we bounced off the bottom, I'm very bullish now. Um, I thought we were in a massive bubble, but we're just very bullish. We had a lot of new guys coming into the market, and uh, I think there's going to be some massive growth. I think Bitcoin still has a bit of correcting to do because it took such a massive bull run. But uh, the other guys like Ether, um, I think there's some serious gains to be made in that market. Why am I still at Kraken after the Krakening? Uh, it's probably, to be honest with you, it's probably not smart, but it's one of the only ways you can margin trade. And, um, I think one of the big mistakes people made, um, after, uh, when they were margin trading on Kraken is that they were using, they were using the, the currency they were trading as their collateral. So you, you get this sort of phenomenon going on where, um, back to paint here. So I explained this before. Uh, in the last stream so as you if you're if you're using collateral in the currency that you're trading this is a huge mistake so as if this is a, a value and this is or I'm sorry if this is um, let's get rid of this make it simple so if, if if the price of of ether is going down right then that means your collateral is also going down the value of your collateral is also going down which doesn't sound like that big of a deal but oh what are you doing? Move. But if you're if your ether, ether value of collateral. So I spell collateral. Collateral. Um, if your value of ether is going down, that means the value of your collateral is going down, which means that uh, your rate of liquidation is skyrocketing. So you. So this thing, so if this is your liquidation price, liquidation price, typically you want to have a liquidation price that's like flat, because then you're like, okay, when ether reaches this value, I'm going to be liquidated. But if your collateral is in ether, your liquidation price, it it, it moves, it moves with the market. So it, you just you converge on this liquidation price, and you just get wrecked at values you weren't expecting. So that's what happened in, in the Kraken was that. A lot of people had their had their collateral in, in ether, and uh, they got destroyed because their liquidation price increased with the with the decrease in, in ether value, and it just daisy chained all these uh, all these liquidation events. Let me see. Let's look at these questions. Your notifications need black borders on the text or black text. You have too much white. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll I'll work on it. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Would you ever consider Bitfinex? Um, I don't know. Bitfinex sketches me out, especially after they got hacked. I don't know. That sketches me out. What was the Krakening? Uh, I'll show you in one second what the Krakening was. Where is it? This was the Krakening. <laughs> this right here. Boom. A mass liquidation of leveraged positions that drove the price from $93 to $26 in a matter of minutes. That's the Krakening. Does Kraken... Hey, Schmidt, have you covered the current trend uh yeah i did that was the first thing i talked about um and I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna post the the youtube video up after it gets edited and things like that um it gets chopped down but uh yeah we went pretty in depth in in the in the state of the market um why the bear trend uh continuation calls were bad and where we're likely to head um in the upcoming days uh, we went pretty in depth in that at the beginning um let's see does Kraken have good servers? No, <laughs> but none of the exchanges have good servers because um, you know they just need to upgrade their up, update their infrastructure. There's so many people coming to the crypto space they can't keep up, and it's just a matter of time. You know, I, I can't fault Kraken for having bad servers because all of them have bad servers. Making graphs and MS Paint. You're an engineer after all. I bet you also use MATLAB. I don't. I don't mind MATLAB. MATLAB's okay. I don't have it on my personal computer. I just use this little. Uh, this little guy, he's pretty nice. Let's me do things like 97 minus 2, 95. Very consistent, very understanding. He's always there for me. What I hated is that, what? What I hated the most is that I was two weeks away from having held one year. What? 
I don't know what you're saying. Okay. Oh, you guys are having a separate little conversation. Can you briefly explain longs and shorts? Uh, yeah, a long is just a bet that you think the price is going to go up, and a short is a bet that you think the price is going to go down. That's it. Um, thanks for doing the stream. Well, thanks for tuning in, Adam. Glad you showed up. Um, how much percent capital is the normal day trade gain for you guys? Oh, that comes and goes, because if it's a day like, or if it's a series of weeks like this, um, I mean, it's dry as a bone. But right now, pick the, the getting's good, because it's nice and volatile. And although it wrecks a lot of people in positions and it sucks, um, opportunity for capital growth can be made there. <clears throat> Gemini has been pretty solid. Yeah, I hear good things about Gemini. Um, I'd share liquidity issues with Gemini because not a lot of people use it. Do I use any trading bots? Fuck no, I don't use trade bots. Uh, I'm not a robot, I don't know. Something about it just seems a little unethical to me. It gives you an unfair advantage in the market. And although I'm sure it would... Um, it would increase my gains. Uh, I'm just not down with that. It just doesn't. It just doesn't seem cool to me. And it um, kind of takes away from the whole spirit of the crypto space, right? We're trying to deshackle ourselves from uh, our government, and I feel like by doing that, you're limiting the uh, the opportunities for other people, and I don't like it. From what I can tell, R is doing better than MATLAB. I don't know what you're saying. Okay, as someone who sold 178 last night, what is what in your opinion is going to be the best best price I get back in any chance of 185 yeah so uh, I talked about that earlier I think there's a definite possibility of a pull back to 185 um, anything is possible in the crypto space uh, you get all sorts of crazy things happening but yeah you got a nice support you got a nice support line there one here I think this is one what is this this is 185 I think 190 there's one at 185 somewhere right here I think, it's, I think that's 185. Yeah, there's a nice support line at 185. So I think it's totally possible, you know. Uh, keep an eye out. Maybe place a, a yellow order um, in, in, in the lower areas here. Uh, you never know. Like, you could get a spike like this anytime. A spike like this anytime. If some asshole whale wants to dump on the markets. Like, that's totally feasible. That could happen. Um, let's see. Hey, Schmidt. Do you think bot currency is safe in a place like Coinbase? while physical wallets. So, um, I don't think so. If you're not trading, don't have it on the exchange. Put it on a paper wallet, put it on some other wallet, um, hold the key, um, yeah. If you're not trading, pull it off. And if you are trading, you know, just keep an eye on it. Um, I'm also in the, in the market for a nano S, so I'm keeping an eye on the stocks. I literally, man, so a little, little story. I was about to buy the last two on Amazon, the last two nano S's on Amazon. And I was like shopping around. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try to get it, see if I can find a better deal on it. And within five minutes, the last two were gone. And it's just like, hasn't been in stock ever since. So I'm sad. Um, could you argue the opposite position? Are there signals that indicate a negative trend? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the same thing that applies for positive divergence, you could have negative divergence as well. So if you have a lower low being made and it doesn't correspond with a higher high, oh, I'm sorry, a lower low, then you're diverging, you're looking for a trend reversal. Same, same idea. Get your shit together and make it where we can donate ETH using your button. Is that a thing? Can you can you donate using Ether? Huh. Yeah, I'll look into that. I was actually looking for um, ways to donate with Ether, but if that's a viable option, I'm totally going to use that. Damn. Okay, next question here. Uh, why not just buy it from the Ledger Wallet website? It took four days to ship. Because it says it's out of stock on the Ledger Wallet website last I checked, and it says they don't know when it's going to be in stock. So... What does POS mean for us ETH holders? POS? What do you mean POS? Oh, proof of stake? Oh man, that's gonna be huge. Proof of stake? <laughs> yeah, I like stake. Stake's okay with me. Um, yeah, no, that's gonna be huge. What do you mean? Uh, that's gonna be really good. Everyone's gonna be drawn to the market and it's gonna be humongous. I mean, that's a big milestone. That's gonna be a big milestone and it's gonna prove, um, it's gonna really prove the value of Ether, in my opinion. I mean, why would that be a bad thing? Is there an argument for why that would be bad? Oh, I haven't seen it. All right. If the stake, yeah. So it could be bad if the stake is well done. That could be an issue. All right. It seems like um, it seems like we, we we covered things pretty well. Um, should we should we wrap it up? I think we should wrap it up. We streamed for about an hour and forty minutes, so. Um, yeah, so let's just recap real quick before we uh, part ways. Um, so based on our levels of, of support that we drew out um, and based on our FIB 
extension here um, from the very bottom to the peak of our little run here. Um, we can expect a 220%, uh, I'm sorry, $220 price target. And we've got um, several indicators that support that, like our six hour MACD flipped, right? We've got a, a 12 hour MACD that's about to flip. Uh, so we got some big things coming here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking by the, the, two, the 220 price target for now. Um, also, I feel like I'm rambling at the moment because I'm, I'm running on like four hours of sleep. Uh, and I've got like casino smelling clothes and a degenerate uh, raspy throat at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so as always, um, you know, if you guys like the stream uh, and you want to support it, uh, there are a couple of different avenues to donate. Uh, there's a donation button at the bottom of the stream, and there's also, if you want to donate Ether, uh, that's also um, on my Twitter uh, handle on, in the profile, um, or even just simply retweeting, you know, uh, the charts or, or shooting us a like um, on the, the YouTube page. That all works the same for me. Um, yeah, and if you have any 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 topics you guys want to cover, uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. I try to um, try to respond as much as possible. Um, I think I'm pretty active on there. So um, let's see. Any closing thoughts here? What time will, when will my next stream be? So I'm trying to set a uh, consistent schedule for the stream. Um, it's a little tough at the moment because I still have my current job, and I'm not. Um, you know, once I once I'm able to leave my job and uh, do this full time, I'll be able to set a rigid schedule. But we'll have to play it by ear for the next couple weeks or so uh, before I can get, you know, fully up and running. Um, I would like to do a, a a twice a day stream, one in the morning to cover the nighttime movements. You know, maybe like a 15, 20 minute stream, and then one in the evening. Uh, but it's a little tough. I might be on tomorrow if we see something big happen. Um, and if I and if I'm on tomorrow, it'll be around 10:30 Eastern Standard Time uh, during the week. So, what's my current job? I'm an aerospace engineer. Um, definitely not gonna give you my place of work. <laughs> Do you want my home address too? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer. But um, yeah. Yeah. yep. All right. Cool. So yeah, once again, you know, if you guys want to, if you guys want to shoot out a retweet of uh, either my charts or my thoughts on the market, or uh, even just whenever we're going live, that'd be awesome. You know, we're we were chilling around um, 200 viewers concurrent throughout the majority of the stream. So um, <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. And then once again, the donations at the bottom, uh, the do donation tab. It takes Bitcoin. And uh, USD, and there's uh, an Ether address uh, on my um, on my Twitter account. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, maybe we'll see each other tomorrow, um, and maybe we won't. That seems uh, pretty much like like useless like useless information. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Cheers.